there has been a lot of uh, speculation about a third wave of uh, COVID-19 uh, which is uh, feared to particularly involve children. So in this video, we shall be discussing about uh, the facts with regard to this speculation. So to begin with, the positive news is that the government as well as scientific bodies like the Indian Academy of Pediatrics have clearly told that there is no need to be concerned about the third wave which is going to be overtly or particularly involving children. Although children are per se as predisposed to develop infection due to the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, uh, it is definitely not true that the third wave may be particularly prone to involve children in particular. So there is no such uh, fact behind this speculation. However, it is also true that one has to be aware of the precautions that need to be followed to identify and as well as treat the early signs of COVID-19 in children. So first and foremost, by the virtue of having a better lifestyle than most adults, most children or in other words, you know, more than 90% of children will get away with mild forms of uh, COVID-19 or perhaps maybe even asymptomatic COVID-19. In up to 10 to 15 percent children, there can be moderate to severe disease in the form of high grade fever or breathing difficulty or severe diarrhea, vomiting, decreased urine output, which may require hospitalization. So as parents, we need to first know of the signs of COVID-19 in children so that we can seek prompt medical attention. So like in adults, most of the symptoms are uh, similar to a typical viral infection in the form of low grade fever, very rarely high grade fever also can be there, headache, body aches, tiredness, muscle pain, diarrhea, vomiting, cold, running nose, cough and sometimes more severe symptoms like breathing difficulty, falling oxygen levels, severe dehydration, lethargy, decreased urine output etc. There can be some children, very small percentage of children who can develop severe forms of respiratory failure which may require ventilation, NIV or non-invasive ventilation, CPAP and oxygen and intravenous antibiotics and fluids. So the important sign is to pick up these early signs and to take medical help as far as possible, as fast as possible. There are some signs and symptoms particularly which must prompt early referral to the nearest hospital and these are called as red flag signs. These include high grade fever, so very high spiking fever. If there is uh, falling oxygen saturation levels, if the SpO2 levels as recorded by a pulse oximeter at home, if they read less than 93%, if the child has significant breathing difficulty as identified by chest in drawing, if there is decreased oral intake of fluids and uh, food and the child has decreased urine output or if there are recurrent episodes of watery loose stools may be associated with blood. All these signs may prompt immediate attention and then you need to take the child to the nearest hospital and take your pediatrician's guidance. Now there is also a condition which is called as MISC. This is multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. This is a typical post-COVID complication also that one needs to watch out for. So if your child has had COVID in the past and has just recovered or it may be that someone else in your family had COVID and your child probably just had an asymptomatic COVID infection which you never even detected, you still need to look out for this complication. Typically, it is seen within two to four weeks of the COVID infection. So from two weeks to four weeks from the time the child may have tested positive or probably had an undiagnosed, undetected COVID infection also. And how do we recognize MISC? So typically the signs are again high grade fever, uh, usually more than 100.4 degrees in Fahrenheit. There may be skin peeling, um, you know, typically the, the layers of the skin may start peeling. You may see red eyes, there may be a skin rash, there may also be diarrhea, there may be a feeling of tiredness and weakness the child may perceive. So typically the doctor might want to run a um, few tests to detect increase in inflammatory markers like uh, ferritin and CRP. 
there may be some cardiac enzymes which may also be abnormal in this condition. But the good news again is that MISC is very well manageable with uh, anti or immunomodulatory drugs like steroids and sometimes intravenous immunoglobulin. The outcome with this uh, medication protocol when started early is very, very promising. But when not identified and treated early, uh, there can be um, a risk of complications, both morbidity and mortality, which can be to the tune of 1 in 100. So, uh, the other good news is prevention in the form of vaccination is being studied even in children. And there are ongoing trials of uh, various vaccination uh, in the age group of 2 to 18 years. So, the, the news of approval or uh, authorization for one of the existing vaccinations for COVID is awaited in this age group very soon. Of course, as uh, responsible family members, it is a duty of all of us adults more than 18 years to get vaccinated because we can break the chain of transmission. Now, until vaccination is approved, the safety precautions for children to prevent COVID remain the same as in adults, including social distancing, limiting movement outside your homes unless and until it's absolutely unavoidable, like say a hospital visit for your child's immunization or vaccination and regular hand sanitization, sanitization of the surfaces and uh, wearing mask, triple eight mask or a cloth mask for a child more than five years is mandatory as per the IAP guidelines. So take care, stay safe, all the best. Don't forget to like and share this video. For more such videos, do subscribe to the MFind channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update.